Hi everyone, today we will study lines and angles. In this video and in the upcoming videos, we will see concept about lines and angles. First of all, let's see what is a line segment. A line segment has two end points. A line segment AB is denoted by the symbol this. A line segment has two end points. This is one end point and this is another end point. And we have named this end point as A. And we have named this endpoint as B. We use capital letters of English to name endpoints. You can use any two alphabets. You can use like P or Q or S and T, D and D. You can use any two alphabets of English to name endpoints. So line segment has two endpoints. So in this figure, A is one endpoint and B is another endpoint. Now join these two endpoints you will get a line segment. So this is a line segment and we called it a line segment AB. Line segment AB. A is one endpoint and B is another endpoint. So we have written both of them together. Or you can say symbolically we can write line segment as AB and draw a line like this. So symbolically we represent line segment like this. Let's just say I have written PQ like this. So this means we have a line segment whose one end point is P, the end point is Q. So this is a line segment. Let's just say I write C and D. So this means we have a line segment whose one end point is C and another end point is D. Its length is denoted by AB. So if we simply write AB, it means we are talking about the length of a line segment. Since a line segment has two end points, so therefore it is of some definite length. We can always measure what is the length of this line segment by using ruler or you can say scale we can measure the length of this line segment let's say this is of 10 centimeter now i'm drawing a line segment let's say this is 5 centimeter so line segment is of definite length we can draw line segment of any length like 20 centimeter 15 centimeter 8 centimeter or 60 centimeter a line segment is always of definite length. Now we will study about line. Let's suppose we have a line segment P and Q. Now we are extending its end point in both directions. We will get a line. So this is a line. A line has no end points. A line has no end points. Whereas a line segment has two end points. By extending two end points in either directions endlessly give us a line. So if you have a line segment, let's say CD, this is line segment. If you extend its endpoints endlessly in both directions, you will get a line. So this is a line. A line PQ is denoted by like this. So symbolically we write line like this. Write P and Q and draw a line with the arrow both hands. So this is a symbol for a line. Let's say I write X, Y and like this. So this means this is a line. This is line with one point is X and another point is Y. Since line segment has no end points, therefore line is not of definite length. Let's say I draw a line like this. I write this C. And this is D. This is also a line. And symbolically, I can write like this write C and D and draw a line with arrow with both hands. Now, let's see what is a ray. A ray has one endpoint. So, this is a ray. For example, this is OP is a line segment. Now, we are extending its one endpoint. P endlessly 
this will give us a ray so this is a ray therefore op is a ray let's say let's say i have one endpoint r now i am extending another point and lastly let's say this endpoint is s symbolically we write like this write rs and draw line and draw arrow at one end so symbolically we represent ray like this let's say I have one endpoint A, and now I am extending another endpoint, and lastly, which is B. So A B is a ray. Symbolically, we can write like this: write A B, and draw a line, and draw arrow at one end. So symbolically, we represent ray like this. So in this video, we have discussed about what is a line segment, what is a line, and what is ray. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. Today we will study about angles. What are angles? An angle is formed when two rays originate from the same end point. The rays making an angle are called the arms of the angle, and the end point is called the vertex of the angle. See, these are two rays. This is the end point of this ray. and this is the end point of this ray also so these rays have common end point and one ray is like this and another ray is originating like this so these two rays are forming an angle this is an angle this is one ray this is another ray and they are making an angle so if this angle is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees that is if this angle is greater than 0 degrees but less than 90 degrees then this angle is going to be an acute angle therefore an acute angle measures between 0 degrees and 90 degrees let's say this angle is 43 degrees so this is an acute angle now let's say we have one ray like this and another ray like this And let's say this angle is seventy-eight degrees. So this is also an acute angle because seventy-eight degrees is greater than zero degrees. Seventy-eight degrees is greater than zero degrees. But seventy-eight degrees is less than ninety degrees. So acute angle is formed between two rays when angle is greater than zero degree but less than ninety degrees. now what is right angle now we have two rays one like this and another like this these two rays have common end point or you can say starting point so this angle is 90 degrees a right angle is exactly equal to the 90 degrees so whenever we have two rays and angle between them is exactly 90 degrees then we can say that angle is right angle or we can say vice versa also we have right angles between two rays that means that angle is going to be a 90 degree now what is obtuse angle an angle greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees is called an obtuse angle let's say we have two rays one like this and another like this so if this angle is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees then this angle is going to be an obtuse angle let's say this angle is 135 degrees so this is an obtuse angle let's say we have ray like this and another ray like this let's say this angle is 155 degrees so this is an obtuse angle so angle between two rays is going to be an obtuse if that is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees 
Now, what is straight angle? A straight angle is equal to 180 degrees. When angle is between two rays is 180 degrees, then that angle is called straight angle. We have one ray like this and another ray like this. So, this angle is known as straight angle or you can say 180 degrees. We have two rays, one ray is like this and another ray is like this. So, this angle, this angle is 180 degrees. When the angle between two rays is exactly 180 degrees, then that angle is called straight angle. Now, what is refract angle? An angle which is greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees is called a reflex angle. When angle between two rays is such that that angle is greater than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees, then that angle is called reflex angle. We have one ray like this and another ray like this. So, this angle between two rays is reflex angle because it is greater than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees and we know this angle is acute angle because it is greater than 0 degrees but less than 90 degrees and this is reflex angle. So, when two rays originate from same end point they form an angle. An angle is also formed when lines or line segments meet. When lines or line segment meet, they also form an angle. Now, in this figure, we are given a triangle. In triangles, we will study about what is a triangle and different types of triangles. For the time being, just remember, a triangle is made up of three sides and those three sides are line segments. So, this is one line segment and this is second line segment and this is third line segment. So, in figure 1.1 line segment PQ and QR intersect at Q to form angle PQR. In this figure line segment PQ, this line segment and line segment QR, this line segment are meeting at point Q to form and this angle. This angle is called angle PQR. Symbol for angle is this. Draw like this and write PQR. So, this angle is PQR and line segment QR, this line segment and line segment RP, this line segment are meeting at point R to make an angle this, this angle is called angle PRQ. In triangles we will see how to name angles. For the time being just remember that this angle, this angle is angle PRQ and this line segment, line segment RP and line segment PQ form this angle, this angle is called angle RPQ. So, line segments also form an angle when line segments meet or intersect they form an angle. An angle PQR is denoted by symbol like this. We can write angle PQR or symbolically we can write angle PQR. This symbol we use for angle. This symbol is used for angle. When lines intersect or meet, they also form angles. Now, we have two lines, this line PQ and this line RS. They are intersecting at point O. 
so this point is point of intersection in the upcoming video we will see what are intersecting lines now just understand this that these are two lines and they have point of intersection o therefore o is point of intersection and they are forming four angles one angle is this another angle is this another angle is this and another angle is this lines pq and rs intersect at o lines pq and rs intersect at o to form four angles angle pos this angle this angle is pos this angle is angle pos angle soq this angle is angle soq angle soq angle qor this angle this angle is angle qor and this angle is angle rop angle rop so in this video we have discussed when our angles are formed and different types of angles thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study complementary angles and supplementary angles first of all let's see what are complementary angles when the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees the angles are called complementary angles let's suppose we have two angles see in this figure we have two angles 30 degrees and another angle is 60 degrees now take their sum 30 degrees plus 60 degrees is equal to 90 degrees 30 plus 60 is 90 and write degrees sign so 30 degrees plus 60 degrees is equal to 90 degrees therefore these two angles that is 30 degrees and 60 degrees are complementary angles or you can also say pair of complementary angles in figure 3.1 in this figure the 30 degrees angle is the complement of 60 degree angle as these two angles are complementary angles we can say 30 degree angle is complement of 60 degrees angle and vice versa is also true that is 60 degree angles is complement of 30 degree angles we always measure angles in degrees or radians in this video we will only study about angles in degrees let's say i write 30 now i write degree sign now it is an angle 30 degrees angle 30 degrees now let's say i write 115 now this is number if i write a degree sign like this now it is an angle now this is 115 degrees now to add two angles in degrees simply add them and write degree sign 115 degrees plus 30 degrees will be 115 plus 30 is going to be 145 so write 145 as these angles are in degrees write degree sign so our answer is 145 degrees now let's say we have two angles let's say we have one angle 33 degrees and another angle is 72 degrees now add them 33 degrees plus 72 degrees this will be 105 degrees as a sum of these two angles that is 33 degrees and 72 degrees is not equal to 90 degrees therefore these two angles are not complementary angles not complementary Now let's say we have two angles 30 degrees and 
60 degrees. Now add them, their sum is 90 degrees. 30 plus 60 is 90. Now angles in degrees, therefore write a degree sign. As the sum of these two angles is 90 degrees, therefore 30 degrees and 60 degrees are complementary angles. Or you can also say pair of complementary angles. Now let's say we have two angles. Now let's say we have two angles. One is 21 degrees and another is 69 degrees. Now take their sum. This will be 90 degrees. Write 21 and 69. Now take their sum. This will be 90. Both angles are in degrees. Therefore write a degree sign. Now the sum of these two angles is 90 degrees. Therefore these are complementary angles. 21 degrees and 69 degrees. These two are complementary angles pair. Now what are supplementary angles? When the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, the angles are called supplementary angles. Now if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, the angles are called supplementary angles. Now see in this figure, one angle is 112 degrees and another angle is 68 degrees. Now take their sum. One angle is 112 degrees, another angle is 68 degrees. Now if you add them, you will get 180 degrees. 112 plus 68. You will get 180. Now these angles are in degrees. Therefore, write a degree sign. As the sum of these two angles is 180 degrees. Therefore, these angles are supplementary angles. Therefore, 112 degrees and 68 degrees are supplementary angles. Supplementary angles. In figure 4.1, in this figure, 112 degree angle is the supplement of 68 degrees angle. We can say 112 degree is a supplement of 68 degrees angle and vice versa is also true. That is 68 degrees angle is supplement of 112 degrees angle. So sum of two angles should be 180 degrees, then only those angles will be supplementary. Let's say I write 200 degrees and 100 degrees. Now if you take their sum, you will get 300 degrees. So these two angles are not supplementary angles because their sum is not 180 degrees. Now let's say I write 100 degrees and 80 degrees. Now take their sum, this will be 180 degrees. So these two angles are supplementary angles, 100 degrees and 80 degrees are supplementary angles. If the sum of two angles is 90 degree, then those angles are complementary. And if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then those angles are supplementary angles. So in this video, we have seen what are complementary angles and what are supplementary angles. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. Today we will see what are adjacent angles. Now first of all, let's see what is vertex and what is arm. Let's say, let's say we have one line like this and another line like this and they are forming this angle. This is angle and this is vertex. Point where two lines are meeting is called vertex. This line and this line is meeting at this point. So this is a vertex and this line is called arm. And this line is also called arm. Now let's say we have two lines like this. They are forming this angle. This is angle. And these two lines are meeting at this point. So this is vertex. And this line is called arm. And this line is also called arm. 
whenever we have angle we have a vertex as you can see we have angle we have this angle and we are having a vertex in this figure this is an angle and this is a vertex suppose we have two angles and now we want to see whether they are adjacent angles or not to check that we must check three conditions first they must have a common arm second they must have a common vertex and third their non common arms are on the either side of the common arm so angles to be adjacent they must fulfill these three conditions if they fall short of any one of these condition then that angles will not be adjacent angles now let's understand with this some example we have two angles this angle p this is angle p and this is angle q this is angle q now they have common vertex this is angle q and this line this line is meeting at this point so this is a vertex now see angle p this is angle p this line and this line is meeting at this point so this is a vertex of angle p and this is also a vertex of angle q both angles have common vertex they must have a common arm now as you can see this is angle p and this is angle q so this is a common arm because with this arm we are having angle p and with this sum we are having angle q with the help of this sum we are having two angles angle p and angle q therefore it is a common arm now third condition is non common arms are on either side of the common arm as you can see this is common arm common arm and this is non common arm let's say nc and this is also nc nc means non common arm this non common arm is on this side of this common arm and this non common arm is on this side of this common arm so non common arms should be on the both side of the common arm such pair of angles are called adjacent angles as these two angles are fulfilling three conditions therefore these are adjacent angles and we have seen adjacent angles have a common vertex and a common arm now let's say i draw figure like this let's say this is angle a and this is angle b now check whether angle a and angle b are adjacent angles or not now check those three conditions first they must have a common arm this is angle b this is angle b its vertex is this because these lines are meeting at this point so this is vertex of angle b and now you can see this is angle a and these two lines are meeting at this point so this is also a vertex of angle a therefore vertex of a and b is overlapping hence this is a common vertex now these two angles have common vertex now let's see if they have common arm or not see this arm is a common arm because with this arm we are having angle a and with this arm we are having angle b so it is a common arm we are also having a common arm so two conditions are fulfilled now check the last condition that is non common arms must be on the either side of the common arm this is a common arm and this is non common arm 
non common arm this is also a non common arm as you can see non common arms are on the either side of the common arm therefore these two angles are adjacent angles now let's say we have angle like this this is angle r and this is angle this is angle s and this is angle r this complete angle is angle r and this is angle s now check whether these are adjacent angles or not as you can see this line and this line making an angle r and these lines are meeting at this point so this is a vertex of angle r and angle s is formed by these two lines and these are meeting at this point this is angle s so this point is also a vertex of angle s so angle s and angle r have common vertex now check what is their common arm with the help of this arm we are having angle r this is angle r and with the help of this arm we are having angle s so this is a common arm so these two angles also have common arm now check the last condition as you can see this is a common arm and this is a non common arm and this is also a non common arm and these non common arms are on the same side of the common arm therefore these are not adjacent angles this is a common arm and non common arms are on this side of the common arm hence we can say these non common arms are on the same side of the common arm third condition is not fulfilled hence these two angles are not adjacent angles therefore angle r and angle s are not adjacent angles so this is how we check whether two angles are adjacent or not thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study about linear pair a linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles whose non common sides are opposite rays a linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles whose non common sides are opposite rays we know what are adjacent angles we have studied about adjacent angles in the previous video adjacent angles must fulfill three conditions that is they must have common vertex they must have common arm or you can say common sides third is non common arms or you can say non common sides must be on the either side of the common arm linear pair is also adjacent angles but their non common sides must form a opposite rays for example in figure note that opposite rays which are the non common sides of angle 1 and angle 2 form a line as you can see this is angle 2 its vertex is this it is angle 1 its vertex is this so both angle 1 and 2 have common vertex and this is common side or you can say common arm because with this common arm we are having angle 2 and we are having angle 1 so this is common arm common arm or you can say common side and these are non common arms these are non common arms or non common sides now as you can see these non common arms are opposite rays one ray is going in this direction and another ray is going in this direction this is going in the left direction and this is going in the right direction so these are forming a straight line as you can see these two rays are forming a straight line so these angles angle 1 and angle 2 are linear pair non common arms or you can say non common sides must form a straight line so angles to be a linear pair they must fulfill three conditions first is they must have common vertex 
second they must have a common arm or you can say common side third is non common sides or non common arms must form a straight line as you can see this is non common arm and this is also a non common arm they are forming a straight line and what is special about linear pair is that sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is 180 degree that is angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees these two angles are supplementary thus angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees therefore angles in a linear pair are supplementary as the sum of these two angles is 180 degrees therefore these angles are supplementary angles we have already seen what are supplementary angles and what are complementary angles now let's say we have angle a and we have angle b now check whether these two angles are linear pair or not now we want to check whether these two angles are linear pair or not just check whether these two angles angle a and angle b fulfill the criteria for linear pair or not this is angle a so its vertex is this and this is angle b its vertex is also this so both angle a and angle b have common vertex this now check what is their common arm this is common arm because of this common arm we are having angle a and we are having angle b so this is a common arm and these two are non common arms this one and this one as you can see these two non common arms are forming a straight line these two angles angle a and angle b are fulfilling three conditions of linear pair therefore these two angles are linear pair that is these two angles are supplementary angle a plus angle b is equal to 180 degrees whenever two angles are supplementary their sum is 180 degrees whenever two angles are linear pair their sum is 180 degrees now let's see another example let's say we have angle p and we have angle q now check whether these two angles are linear pair or not for these two angles to be linear pair these two angles must fulfill three conditions of linear pair first condition is they must have a common vertex now check whether they have common vertex or not this is angle q its vertex is this this is angle p its vertex is also this so these two angles have common vertex first condition is fulfilled second condition is they must have common arm common arm or you can say common side so this is a common arm or you can say common side because with this common arm we are having angle q and we are having angle p so this is a common arm common arm or common side now these two are non common arms or non common sides non common arm and non common arm third condition is non common arms must form a straight line now these two are non common arms and they are not forming a straight line one line is like this 
and one line is like this they are not forming a straight line therefore these two angles are not linear pair angle p and angle q are not linear pair so in this way we check whether two angles are linear pair or not in this video we have seen about what are linear pair angles and how to check whether two angles are linear pair or not thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study intersecting lines what are intersecting lines two or more lines intersect if they have a point in common this common point is called their point of intersection let's suppose we have two lines like this so this is point of intersection point of intersection because this point is on this line also and this point is also on this line so this common point is called point of intersection these two lines are intersecting now let's say we have two lines like this they are not intersecting because they don't have point of intersection these two are separate lines we don't have any common point which is on this line and on this line so therefore these two lines don't have point of intersection hence these two lines are not intersecting if two or more lines have point of intersection then we can say they are intersecting lines now let's say we have two lines like this so this is point of intersection because this point because this point is on this line and this point is also on this line so this common point is point of intersection and these two lines are intersecting these two lines are intersecting now let's say we have three lines two are like this and one is like this so this point and this point is point of intersection now we have two points of intersection one is this and another is this this point is on this line and on this line also so this is point of intersection and this point is on this line and on this line also so this is also a point of intersection now let's say we have lines like this so this is point of intersection because this point is on this line is also on this line is also on this line and is also on this line so this is point of intersection and these are four intersecting lines because these are four lines 1 2 3 4 now we have four intersecting lines now what are collinear and non collinear points if three or more points lie on the same line they are called collinear points otherwise they are called non collinear points if we have three or more points and they lie on the same line they are called collinear points let's say we have a straight line and we have three points one this another is this and third is this as these three points are on the same line therefore these are collinear points now let's say we have three points one is here another is here and third is here now we have to check whether these points are collinear or not just join them like this or you can join like this now as you can see they are not forming a straight line therefore these are not collinear points if we have three or more points and if we join them 
if they form a straight line then only they are collinear points otherwise they are non collinear points now let's say we have three points one is here another is here and third is here now join them now these three points are making a straight line therefore these are collinear points let's say we have three points one is here another is here and third is here now join them they are forming a straight line therefore these are collinear points now let's say we have three points one is here another is here and third is here as you can see if you join these three points you will not get a straight line you are getting a triangle therefore these are not collinear points so in this video we have seen what are intersecting lines and what is point of intersection and we have also seen what are collinear points and what are non collinear points thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study vertically opposite angles and what is transversal vertically opposite angles are formed when two lines intersect when two lines intersect the vertically opposite angles so formed are equal these two are intersecting lines they are intersecting at this point this is point of intersection because this point is on this line and this point is also on this line this is common point therefore it is point of intersection now these two lines are intersecting and this is point of intersection now we are having four angles this is angle 1 this is angle 2 this is angle 3 and this is angle 4 so what are vertically opposite angles this is angle 1 and this angle 3 are vertically opposite angle pair as you can see they both are vertically opposite to each other and this angle 2 is vertically opposite to angle 4 or you can say angle 4 is vertically opposite to angle 2 and these vertically opposite angles are equal let's say if angle 4 is 40 degrees then angle 2 is going to be 40 degrees let's say if angle 2 is 50 degrees then angle 4 will also be 50 degrees let's say if angle 3 is 70 degrees then angle 1 is going to be 70 degrees let's say if angle 1 is 80 degrees then angle 3 is going to be 80 degrees so vertically opposite angles are equal it is one pair and it is second pair in this figure we are having two pairs of vertically opposite angles angle 1 is equal to angle 3 and angle 2 is equal to angle 4 angle 1 is vertically opposite to angle 3 angle 2 is vertically opposite to angle 4 and vice versa is also true that is angle 4 is vertically opposite to angle 2 now let's say we have two lines like this these are two intersecting lines their point of intersection is this this is point of intersection point of intersection since these two lines have point of intersection therefore these are two intersecting lines now we are having four angles one is this another is this another is this and another is this let's say this angle is angle 1 this is angle 2 this is angle 3 and this is angle 4 so angle 2 is vertically opposite to angle 4 this is angle 2 and this is angle 4 angle 2 and angle 4 are one pair of vertically opposite angle i have written it in short VO stand for vertically opposite angle and this angle angle 3 this is angle 3 this is angle 3 and this is angle 1 this is angle 1 
angle 3 and angle 1 are another pair of vertically opposite angle. Vertically opposite angles are equal therefore angle 2 is equal to angle 4 and angle 3 is equal to angle 1. Let's say if angle 1 is 45 degrees then angle 3 is also 45 degrees. Let's say if angle 2 is 135 degrees then angle 4 is also 135 degrees. Now we will see what is transversal. A line that intersects two or more lines at distinct points is called a transversal. Transversal is a line which intersects two or more lines at distinct points. That line is called transversal. For example, in this figure, this is line R, this is line M and this is line P. Line P is intersecting at this point. at this point and at this point these two are distinct points this is one point and this is another point so line p is transversal because it's intersecting two lines that is r and m at two distinct points now let's say if we have three lines like this and one line is intersecting them so this is transversal because it is intersecting three lines at three distinct points so it is transversal now let's say we have three lines and one line is intersecting like this so this is not a transversal not transversal it is not transversal because it is not intersecting two or more lines it is just intersecting this one line. Now let's say we have lines like this. So in this figure also we also don't have any transversal. This is point of intersection. All these four lines have common point of intersection which is this. Therefore we don't have any transversal here. A transversal must intersect two or more lines at distinct points. So in this figure we don't have any transversal. So in this video we have seen what are vertically opposite angles and we have also seen what is transversal. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. Today we will study angles made by transversal. Now see in this figure we have line R and line M. This line P is transversal because it is intersecting two lines that is R and M at two distinct point at this point and at this point. These two are point of intersections. Now we are having eight angles. This is angle one, this is angle two, this is angle three, this is angle four, angle five, angle six, angle seven, angle eight. Whenever we have a transversal, and it is intersecting two lines then we will have total eight angles in this figure we have different kinds of angles what are those let's see angle 3 angle 4 angle 5 and angle 6 this angle 3 angle 4 angle 5 and angle 6 these angles are interior angles these are interior angles because these are in the interior of lines R and M. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 7, angle 8 are exterior angles. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 7 and angle 8. All these are exterior angles because these are in the exterior of these lines R and M. angle 3 and 5 this angle 3 and this angle 5 is a pair of interior angle these two are pair of interior angle on the same side of the transversal this is transversal 
and these two angles are on the left of transversal and this is right angle 3 and angle 5 are pair of interior angles which are on the same side of the transversal and this angle 4 and 6 this angle 4 and this angle 6 are another pair of interior angles which are on the same side of the transversal these two angles are on the right of transversal so we are having two pairs of interior angles which are on the same side of the transversal angle 3 and 5 is one pair and it is on the left of the transversal angle 4 and 6 are another pair and they are on the right of the transversal angle 1 and angle 5 angle 2 and angle 6 angle 1 and angle 5 angle 2 and angle 6 angle 3 and angle 7 angle 4 and angle 8 are pairs of corresponding angles this angle 1 and this angle 5 is one pair of corresponding angles angle 2 and angle 6 is another pair of corresponding angles angle 3 and angle 7 is another pair of corresponding angles angle 4 and angle 8 is another pair of corresponding angles so we are having total four pairs of corresponding angles we are having a total four pairs of corresponding angles this is one pair this is another pair this is another pair and this is last pair angle 3 and angle 6 angle 4 and angle 5 are pairs of alternate interior angles angle 3 and angle 6 this angle 3 and this angle 6 is pair of interior alternate angles another pair is angle 4 and angle 5 angle 4 and angle 5 is another pair of alternate interior angle angle 4 and angle 5 this is one pair angle 3 and angle 6 this is second pair these two are pairs of alternate interior angles 1 and 8 2 and 7 are pairs of alternate exterior angles this angle 1 and this angle 8 is a pair of alternate exterior angle and this angle 2 and angle 7 is another pair of alternate exterior angle so we are having two pairs of alternate exterior angles one is angle 1 and 8 and another is angle 2 and 7 so in this video we have seen different kinds of angles made by a transversal now just remember these two lines lines r and m are not parallel are not parallel in the upcoming videos we will see what are parallel lines thanks for watching hi everyone today we will see how to identify corresponding angles if we have two angles then how to verify whether they are corresponding angles or not just check these three conditions if those angles fulfill these conditions then they are corresponding angles corresponding angles include different vertices now see in this figure these two are lines and this is transversal this is the vertex of angle 1 this is angle 1 and this is the vertex of angle 5 this is angle 5 now both these angles have different vertices second condition are on the same side of the transversal this is transversal and this is left side and this is right side these two angles angle 1 and angle 5 are to the left of the transversal therefore they are on the same side of the transversal third condition is are in corresponding positions 
अबव और बिलो लेफ्ट और राइट रिलेटिव टू द टू लाइन्स कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स वेदर विल बी ऑन द टॉप और बिलो रिलेटिव टू द टू लाइन्स दीज आर टू लाइन्स एंड एंगल वन इज दिस एंड एंगल फाइव इज दिस बोथ एंगल्स आर ऑन द टॉप ऑफ दीज लाइन्स नाउ दीज एंगल्स फुलफिल थ्री कंडीशन देयर फॉर दीज आर कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स नाउ सी इन दिस फिगर दिस इज एंगल सेवन इट्स वर्टेक्स इज दिस दिस इज एंगल थ्री इट्स वर्टेक्स इज दिस बोथ हैव डिफरेंट वर्टेक्सिस देयर फॉर फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज मेट एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दिस इज ट्रांसवर्सल एंड दीज एंगल्स आर टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ ट्रांसवर्सल बोथ आर ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ द ट्रांसवर्सल दे आर ऑन द लेफ्ट सेकेंड कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो फुलफिल्ड एंगल सेवन एंड एंगल थ्री आर बिलो एज कंपेयर टू दीज लाइन्स थर्ड कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो मेट एज रिजल्ट दीज टू एंगल्स आर कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स एंगल थ्री एंड एंगल सेवन एंगल वन एंड एंगल फाइव इज वन कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल पेयर एंगल थ्री एंड एंगल सेवन इज एन अदर कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल पेयर नाउ सी इन दिस फिगर दिस इज एंगल टू इट्स वर्टेक्स इज दिस दिस इज एंगल सिक्स इट्स वर्टेक्स इज दिस बोथ दीज एंगल्स हैव डिफरेंट वर्टिसिस फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज फुलफिल्ड बोथ ऑफ दीज एंगल्स आर टू द राइट ऑफ ट्रांसवर्सल दैट इज दे आर ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ द ट्रांसवर्सल सेकेंड कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो फुलफिल्ड नाउ चेक द थर्ड कंडीशन एंगल टू एंड एंगल सिक्स बोथ एंगल्स आर अबव एज कंपेयर टू दीज लाइन्स therefore third condition is also fulfilled hence we can say angle 2 and angle 6 is corresponding angles now third pair is angle 2 and angle 6 now see in this figure this is angle 4 its vertex is this this is angle 8 its vertex is this as both of these angles have different vertices therefore first condition is fulfilled this is transversal in both angles this is angle 4 this is angle 8 are to the right of transversal these angles are on the same side of the transversal therefore second condition is also fulfilled angle 4 is below this line and angle 8 is also below this line so both of these angles are below as compared to these two lines third conditions also fulfilled these angles have fulfilled three conditions of corresponding angles therefore these are corresponding angles angle 4 and angle 8 is another pair of corresponding angles so in this way we check whether two angles are corresponding or not just check these three conditions if those angles fulfill these three conditions they will be corresponding angles so we have four pairs of corresponding angles one pair is angle 1 and 5 second pair is angle 3 and angle 7 third pair is angle 2 and angle 6 fourth pair is angle 4 and angle 8 now let's say we have two lines like this and we have a transversal so this is one corresponding angle pair this is second corresponding angle pair this is third corresponding angle pair and this is fourth corresponding angle pair so in this video we have discussed how to identify corresponding angles thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study how to identify alternate interior angles to identify alternate interior angles just check these three conditions alternate interior angles have different vertices in this figure this is line this is line 
and this is transversal this is angle 3 and this is angle 6 angle 3 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles angle 3 is this its vertex is this angle 6 is this and its vertex is this both of these angles have different vertices are on the opposite sides of the transversal this is transversal and angle 3 and angle 6 are on the opposite sides of the transversal angle 3 is on the left side and angle 6 is on the right side third condition is lie between the two lines angle 3 and angle 6 both of these angles lie between these two lines therefore these angles are alternate interior angles now see in this figure this is angle 4 and this is angle 5 this angle 4 its vertex is this this is angle 5 its vertex is this both of these angles have different vertices therefore first condition is fulfilled angle 4 and angle 5 is on the opposite sides of the transversal this is transversal angle 4 is on the right side and angle 5 is on the left side of the transversal second condition is also fulfilled now third condition is as you can see these are two lines and angle 4 and angle 5 lie between these two lines third condition is also fulfilled therefore these two angles are alternate interior angles for angles to be alternate interior angles they must fulfill these three conditions let's say this is angle 1 and this is angle 2 now check whether these two angles are alternate interior angles or not this is angle 1 its vertex is this this is angle 2 its vertex is this both of these angles have different vertices but as you can see angle 1 and angle 2 lie on the same side of the transversal both lie on the left side of the transversal second condition is not fulfilled therefore these two angles are not alternate interior angles so these two angles angle 1 and angle 2 are not alternate interior angles so in this video we have seen how to identify alternate interior angles thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study transversal of parallel lines parallel lines are lines on a plane that do not meet anywhere these two are parallel lines because they don't meet anywhere distance between them is same even if you extend these two lines they won't meet they will go on like this if you extend in this direction also they won't meet they will go on like this so parallel lines don't meet anywhere I have line one like this and another is like this so these are not parallel lines as you can see distance between them is reducing ultimately if you extend this line they will meet somewhere they will meet here so these are not parallel lines parallel lines don't meet anywhere let's say I have one line like this and another is like this these are parallel lines because they won't meet anywhere even if you extend these two lines they won't meet distance will be same 
so these are two parallel lines let's say i have one line like this and another is like this these are also not parallel lines because they will meet somewhere here therefore these are also not parallel lines not parallel lines now see in this figure we have two parallel lines and this is transversal because it is intersecting two lines at distinct points this is one point of intersection this is another point of intersection so this line is transversal of two parallel lines these two are parallel lines now again we will have eight angles this is angle 1 this is angle 7 this is angle 5 this is angle 3 this is angle 2 this is angle 4 this is angle 6 and this is angle 8 angle 1 and angle 5 are vertically opposite angles this is one pair angle 1 and angle 5 are vertically opposite angles vo stands for vertically opposite angles angle 3 and angle 7 is another pair this is another pair of vertically opposite angles angle 2 and angle 6 is vertically opposite angles this is third pair angle 2 and angle 6 this is also a vertically opposite angles pair and angle 4 and angle 8 is also vertically opposite angles pair so fourth pair is angle 4 and angle 8 we have total four pairs of vertically opposite angles angle 3 and angle 4 is pair of corresponding angles another pair is angle 1 and angle 2 third pair is angle 5 and angle 6 and fourth pair is angle 7 and angle 8 angle 3 and angle 4 this is one pair angle 1 and angle 2 this is another pair angle 5 and angle 6 this is another pair and angle 7 and angle 8 this is another pair all these are pairs of corresponding angles angle 3 and angle 8 is a pair of alternate interior angles angle 1 and angle 6 is another pair of alternate interior angles if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal each pair of corresponding angles are equal in measures if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal then each pair of corresponding angles are equal in measures this means angle 3 is equal to angle 4 angle 1 is equal to angle 2 angle 5 is equal to angle 6 and angle 7 is equal to angle 8 if angle 3 is 40 degrees then angle 4 will be 40 degrees whatever will the measure of angle 3 that will the measure of angle 4 whatever will be the measure of angle 1 that will be the measure of angle 2 so all these corresponding pairs are equal and if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal then each pair of alternate interior angles are also equal angle 3 and angle 8 is one pair angle 3 and angle 8 is one pair of alternate interior angles angle 1 and angle 6 is another pair angle 1 and angle 6 is another pair of alternate interior angles angle 3 is equal to angle 8 and angle 1 is equal to angle 6 we can prove this how angle 1 is equal to angle 6 and how angle 3 is equal to angle 8 as you can see angle 3 and angle 7 are vertically opposite angles angle 3 and angle 7 are vertically opposite angles and vertically opposite angles are equal 
Therefore, angle 3 is equal to angle 7 because they are vertically opposite angles. And angle 7 and angle 8 are corresponding angles pair. And these two angles are also equal. That is angle 7 is equal to angle 8 because pair of corresponding angles are equal. Angle 7 is equal to angle 8. These are corresponding angles. Now in this, just write angle 8 in place of angle 7 because these two angles are equal. Therefore, angle 3 is equal to angle 8. Angle 3 and angle 8 are pair of alternate interior angles. And we can also prove in same way that angle 1 is equal to angle 6. Hence, we can say if two parallel lines if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles are equal. So in this video, we have seen what are parallel lines and we have also seen how to alternate interior angles are equal. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. Today we will continue our previous lecture. In this video, we will see one more useful result. That is, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. Now, if we have two parallel lines, like in this figure, we have two parallel lines, line L and M. Line L is parallel to line M. This is a symbol for parallel and this is transversal. Then interior angles on the same side of the transversal. This is left side and this is right side of the transversal. Then these are interior angles, angle 3 and 6. They are on the same side of the transversal. They are on the left side of the transversal. Angle 1 and 8 are also interior angles and they are on the right side of the transversal. Angle 1 and angle 8. Then sum of these interior angles that is angle 3 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees and angle 1 plus angle 8 is also 180 degrees. We already know when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal then corresponding angles are equal, alternate interior angles are also equal and vertically opposite angles are also equal. Now in figure, angle 3 and angle 1 are linear pair. These two angles are linear pair. So if two angles are linear pair, then their sum is 180 degrees. Angle 1 plus angle 3 will be 180 degrees. Or you can also write angle 3 plus angle 1 is equal to 180 degrees. We know how to identify linear pair angles. So angle 3 plus angle 1 is equal to 180 degrees and angle 1 and angle 6 angle 1 and angle 6 angle 1 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles and these angles are also equal angle 1 is equal to angle 6 since these are parallel lines and they are cut by a transversal therefore alternate interior angles are also equal but angle 1 is equal to angle 6 a pair of alternate interior angles. So here in place of angle 1 just write angle 6 that is angle 3 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees. Angle 1 is equal to angle 6 therefore we can write angle 6 in place of angle 1. As you can see angle 3 Angle 3 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees. We have proved this result. Therefore, interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. Similarly, we can prove angle 1 plus angle 8 is equal to 180 degrees. So, sum of two interior angles on the same side of the transversal is 180 degrees. So this is also an important result. So in this video we have seen important result regarding interior angles. Thanks for watching.
Hi everyone. Today we will see shortcut method to find corresponding angles. Corresponding angles form F shape. Just see in figures. See in this figure we have two parallel lines, line L and M. This and this is a corresponding angle. As you can see, these angles form F shape. This is this angle and this is this angle. Now join these, you will get F shape. So these are corresponding angles. Now this and this both are corresponding angles. This is this angle and this is this angle. Now join these, you will get F shape. Therefore, these are corresponding angles. So this is shortcut to find corresponding angles. Now see in this figure, line L and M are parallel. These two are parallel lines. It is transversal. This angle and this angle both are corresponding angles. This is this angle and this is this angle. Now join these, you will get F shape. So these are corresponding angles. You getting F like this, F shape. Therefore, these are corresponding angles. Similarly, this and this are corresponding angles. This is this angle and this is this angle. Now join this. You are getting something like this. A F shape. Therefore, both of these are corresponding angles. This and this both are corresponding angles. This is this angle and this is this angle. Now join this. You are getting something like this. This is again an F shape. Therefore, these are corresponding angles. So in this way, we can find out corresponding angles. Now see in this figure, these lines are parallel and this is transversal. These two angles are corresponding angles. This angle is formed like this and this angle is formed like this. Now join them. You are getting something like this. Again, this is an F shape. So these are corresponding angles. This angle and this, these both are corresponding angles. This angle is formed like this and this angle is like this. Now join them. You are getting something like this. This is again an F shape. Therefore, these two angles are also corresponding angles. So this is shortcut to find corresponding angles. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. Today we will see how to identify alternate angles. We will see a shortcut method to find alternate angles. Alternate interior angles form Z shape. Now see in this figure, these two are parallel lines. This is transversal. This angle is like this. And this angle is like this. Now join them. You will get Z shape. Therefore, these angles are alternate interior angles. Now let's say we have this angle and this angle. This angle is like this. And this angle is like this. Now join them. Again, you will get letter Z. Therefore, these are alternate interior angles. In this figure, these two lines are parallel lines and this is transversal. This angle is like this and this angle is like this. Now join them. You will get something like this. This is letter Z. So therefore, these two angles are alternate interior angles. This angle and this angle. This angle is like this and this angle is like this. Now join them. We are getting something like this. This is letter Z. Therefore, these are alternate interior angles. Now see in this figure, L and M are two parallel lines and this is transversal. This angle is like this and this angle is like this. Now join them. Again, you are getting something like this. So this is letter Z. Therefore, these angles are 
alternate interior angles now see this angle and this angle this angle is like this and this angle is like this now join them you are getting something like this again letter z therefore these angles are also alternate interior angles so this is shortcut way to identify alternate interior angles alternate interior angles so in this video we have discussed how to identify alternate interior angles a shortcut method we have discussed thanks for watching hi everyone today we will study points related to parallel lines we know if two lines are parallel then transversal line gives rise to equal corresponding angles equal alternate interior angles and interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary we have already seen in the previous videos that if we have two parallel lines then transversal of those parallel lines will give us equal corresponding angles equal interior equal alternate interior angles and interior angles on the same side of the transversal will be supplementary thus when a transversal cuts two lines such that pairs of corresponding angles are equal then the lines have to be parallel let's say we have two lines we don't know whether they are parallel lines or not but they have transversal and if we find out that these corresponding angles are equal then these lines have to be parallel so this is one way to find out whether two lines are parallel or not just check whether corresponding angles are equal or not if corresponding angles are equal then these lines have to be parallel when a transversal cuts two lines such that pairs of alternate interior angles are equal the lines have to be parallel now see in this case so if alternate interior angles this is one pair of alternate interior angles and this is another pair if alternate interior angles pairs are equal then lines have to be parallel when a transversal when a transversal cuts two lines such that pairs of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary the lines have to be parallel now let's say we have two lines and we don't know whether they are parallel or not but those lines have a transversal and if the sum of these interior angles let this is angle 1 and let this is be angle 2 if the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is 180 degrees and sum of these two angles let this be angle 3 and this be angle 4 this is angle 3 and this is angle 4 and sum of angle 3 and 4 is 180 degrees therefore these lines have to be parallel so in this way we can find out whether two lines are parallel or not So in this video we have seen some points related to parallel lines. Hi everyone. Today we will see some practice questions. Now the question is find the complement of each of the following angles. We are given some angles and we have to find out the complement of these angles. We know when angles are complementary then one angle is called the complement of another. now we have to find out the complement of this angle that means we have to find out the angle whose sum with this 20 degrees angle will give us 90 degree that is the sum of this angle with that angle should be 90 degrees just simply subtract 
20 degrees from 90 degrees you will get 70 degrees so this is a complement of 20 degrees angle complement of two angles means sum of two angles are 90 degrees one angle is 20 degrees then second angle is 90 degrees minus 20 degrees answer is 70 degrees now this is 63 degrees angle from 90 degrees subtract 63 degrees you will get 27 degrees so this is a complement of 63 degrees similarly we can do first 57 degrees angle from 90 degrees subtract 57 degrees this will come out to be 33 degrees so second answer is 27 degrees and third answer is 33 degrees now find the supplement of each of the following angles in this case we have to subtract these angles from 180 degrees 180 degrees minus 105 degrees this will be our answer 180 degrees minus 87 degrees this will be our answer and 180 degrees minus 154 degrees this will be our answer so first answer is 75 degrees second answer is 93 degrees and third answer is 26 degrees identify which of the following pairs of angles are complementary and which are supplementary we need to separate out complementary pairs and supplementary pairs in each of the questions just take the sum of these two angles if the sum is 180 degrees then the pair will be supplementary and if the sum is 90 degrees then the pair will be complementary sum of these two will be 180 degrees therefore these are supplementary sum of these will be 90 degrees therefore these are complementary angles sum of these two will be 180 degrees so these are supplementary angles sum of these will be 180 degrees so these are supplementary angles sum of these will be 90 degrees so these are complementary angles sum of these will be 90 degrees therefore these are complementary angles in that joining figure is angle 1 adjacent to angle 2 give reasons in this figure we need to find out is angle 1 adjacent to angle 2 we know what are adjacent angles we already know that adjacent angles must fulfill three conditions first condition is they must have common vertex second condition is they must have common arm and a third condition is non-common arms should be on the either side of the common arm now this is angle 1 its vertex is this and this is angle 2 its vertex is this so as you can see these are having different vertices for vertices to be common they should overlap and in this case vertices are not overlapping of these angles therefore they are different vertices hence these are not adjacent angles first condition is not fulfilled therefore these are not adjacent angles angle 1 and angle 2 are not adjacent angles because their vertex is not common so in this video we have seen some practice questions of lines and angles thanks for watching hi everyone so in this video we will see some practice question of lines and angles in the joining figure identify the pairs of corresponding angles we are given a figure this is line a this is line B, this line C is transversal. And these are angles. This is angle 1, this is angle 2, angle 4, angle 3, angle 5, angle 6, angle 7, angle 8. So in this figure, we have two parallel lines, line A and B, and transversal C. And total we have 8 angles first we need to find out the pairs of corresponding angles 
एंगल फोर एंड एंगल एट इज वन पेयर वी नो हाउ टू फाइंड आउट कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स दिस इज एंगल एट एंड दिस इज एंगल फोर नॉट ज्वाइन दैम ज्वाइन दिस टू एंगल यू आर गेटिंग समथिंग लाइक दिस दिस इज लेटर एफ देर फॉर दीज आर कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स पेयर एंगल थ्री एंड एंगल सेवन दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स पेयर एंगल थ्री एंड सेवन दिस इज एंगल सेवन दिस इज एंगल थ्री नॉट ज्वाइन दैम यू आर गेटिंग समथिंग लाइक दिस दिस इज लेटर एफ देर फॉर दीज आर ऑल्सो कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स एंगल वन एंड एंगल फाइव दीज आर कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स दिस इज एंगल फाइव एंड दिस इज एंगल वन नॉट ज्वाइन दैम यू आर गेटिंग समथिंग लाइक दिस A letter F. Therefore, these are corresponding angles. Angle one and angle five. Angle two is like this, and angle six is like this. Now join them. You are getting something like this. A letter F. Therefore, fourth pair is angle two and angle six. This is our answer. Now you can see angle one, angle five is one pair. Angle two and angle six is another pair. Angle three and angle seven. Angle four and angle eight. So this is our answer. The pair of alternate interior angles. This angle three and angle five. This is angle three and this is angle five. Now join them. You are getting Z shape. Therefore, these are alternate interior angles. One pair is angle three and angle five. This is angle two, and this is angle eight. Now join them. You are getting something like this, a letter Z. Therefore, second pair is angle two and angle eight. so this is our answer angle 2 and angle 8 is one pair angle 3 and angle 5 is another pair third part is the pairs of interior angles on the same side of the transversal we need to find out the pairs of interior angles which are on the same side of the transversal this is transversal it is left side of transversal and it is right side this angle 3 and angle eight are interior angles and they are on the same side they are on the left side of the transversal so first pair is angle 3 and angle eight second pair is this angle 2 and angle 5 they are on the right side of the transversal second pair is angle 2 and angle 5 last part is the vertically opposite angles now find out the vertically opposite angles this angle 4 and angle 2 is one pair they are vertically opposite angles angle 4 and angle 2 is one pair angle 1 and angle 3 is another pair angle 1 and angle 3 is another pair angle 8 and angle 6 this is third pair they are vertically opposite angles angle 5 and angle 7 This is fourth pair. So total we have four pairs of vertically opposite angles. And these are our answers of four parts. Next question is in the adjoining figure, P is parallel to Q. Find the unknown angles. So this is a symbol for two parallel lines. P is parallel to Q. This is a symbol for parallel lines. In this figure, we have two lines: line P and line Q. They both are parallel, and this is transversal. And we are given some angles. One angle is one twenty-five degrees, 
and another angles are angle A, B, C, D, E and F. We need to find out what are the measures of these angles. First of all, this angle is 125 degrees and this angle D are corresponding angles. Now join them. You are getting something like this. A letter F. Therefore, these angles are corresponding angles. Angle D and angle 125 degrees are corresponding angles. Since we have two parallel lines and they have a transversal, therefore corresponding angles will be equal. Angle D will also be 125 degrees. So this angle D is also 125 degrees. This is 125 degrees. And angle B is vertically opposite to angle D. This is angle D and this is angle B. Both are vertically opposite angles. And both vertically opposite angles are equal. So angle B is equal to angle D. Angle D is 125 degrees. Therefore, angle B is also 125 degrees. So, this angle is also 125 degrees. D and B are 125 degrees. Now, this angle E and this angle 125 degrees. Both are linear pair. Angle E its vertex is this and angle 125 degrees its vertex is also this they have common vertex and this is common arm with this sum we are having angle E and with this sum we are also having angle 125 degrees so this is common arm and these are non common arms and non common arms form a straight line and three conditions of linear pair are now fulfilled therefore these two angles are linear pair. Therefore, sum of angle E and 125 degrees is 180 degrees. Angle E plus 125 degrees will be equal to 180 degrees. Sum of linear pair angles is 180 degrees. We can find out angle E from 180 degrees subtract 125 degrees. Answer will be 55 degrees. So angle E is 55 degrees, this is 55 degrees, angle E is vertically opposite to angle F. So both of these angles will be equal. Angle F is equal to angle E, both are vertically opposite angles. Angle E is 55 degrees, therefore angle F will also be 55 degrees. So angle F is 55 degrees. D is 125 degrees and B is 125 degrees. Now as you can see angle E and angle A are corresponding angles. If you join them you will get something like this. This is letter F. Therefore these angles will be equal. Angle A will be equal to angle E because they both are corresponding angles and angle E is 55 degrees therefore angle A is also 55 degrees this is also 55 degrees now angle A and angle C are vertically opposite angles they both will be equal angle C is equal to angle A because they are vertically opposite angles Angle A is 55 degrees, therefore angle C will also be 55 degrees. So these are answers. Angle C is also 55 degrees. So these are answers. In this video, we have seen some practice questions of lines and angles.
थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग हाय एवरी वन टूडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट ट्राइंगल्स वट इज ए ट्राइंगल ए ट्राइंगल इज ए क्लोज कर्व मेड ऑफ थ्री लाइन सेगमेंट्स ट्राइंगल इज ए क्लोज कर्व सी इन दिस फिगर दिस इज ए क्लोज कर्व एंड इट इज मेड ऑफ थ्री लाइन सेगमेंट्स वन लाइन सेगमेंट इज दिस अनदर लाइन सेगमेंट इज दिस एंड थर्ड लाइन सेगमेंट इज दिस सो ट्राइंगल इज ए क्लोज कर्व एंड इट इज मेड ऑफ थ्री लाइन सेगमेंट्स इट हैज थ्री साइड्स थ्री वर्टेसिस एंड थ्री एंगल्स ट्राइंगल हैज थ्री साइड्स थ्री एंगल्स एंड थ्री वर्टेसिस सी दिस इज ए लाइन सेगमेंट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो ए लाइन सेगमेंट दिस टू आर ज्वाइनिंग एट दिस पॉइंट सो दिस पॉइंट इज कॉल्ड द वर्टेक्स Since we have named this vertex as B, so this is vertex B. This is a line segment, and this is a line segment. Both are meeting at this point, so this is vertex. Since it is named as C, therefore it is vertex C. This is vertex B. This is a line segment, and this is also a line segment. Both are meeting at this point, so this is a vertex. and it is a vertex a because we have named this vertex as a so this triangle has three vertices vertex a vertex b and vertex c this is ab line segment this is bc line segment and this is ca line segment these line segments are also called sides this is also a side and this is also a side so this triangle has three sides so triangles always have three sides this is line segment ab so we can write it as ab and draw line above it because it is line segment this is line segment bc write bc and draw a line above it this is line segment ca write ca and draw line above it a triangle also has three angles as you can see this line segment and this line segment is meeting at this point this is a vertex so this is angle these two line segments are meeting at this point to give rise to this angle this is some angle between these two line segments since this vertex is named as b so we can write it as angle b or you can also write symbol of angle and b so this is one angle this line segment and this line segment is meeting at this point to give rise to this angle we can write it as angle c or symbolically we can write angle c symbol of angle and vertex c and this line segment and this line segment is meeting at this point this is vertex a and this is angle we can write it as angle a or we can write as angle a so these are three angles of triangle and these are three sides of triangle and these three are vertices of triangle and keep in mind we use alphabets to name vertices a b c or you can say p q r or you can write d e f or you can also write x y z you can use any three alphabets of english to name vertices in this figure we have sides ab bc and ca this is ab right ab since it is line segment therefore draw a line above it to signify that it is a line segment right bc and draw line above it to show it is a line segment similarly right ca and draw line above it to show it is a line segment angles are 
angle BAC. This angle, this angle is formed with this line segment and this line segment. So you can say this angle is angle B A C or you can say angle A angle A B C this angle is made up of this line segment and this line segment. So we can write angle A B C or you can also write angle B this angle is made up of this line segment and this line segment therefore this angle is angle B C A or you can also write angle C and we have vertices A B and C we have already seen what are vertices this is vertex A, this is vertex B, this is vertex C. So in this video we have seen what is a triangle. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone. In this video we will discuss types of triangles. Triangles are classified based on sides and angles. Triangles can be classified into two categories. One on the basis of sides, second on the basis of angles. Based on sides, triangles are first is scalene triangle, all three sides are of unequal length. Second is isosceles triangle, any two of the sides are of equal length. Third is equilateral triangle, all three sides are of equal length. Now, let us see what is scalene triangle. In this triangle, all three sides are of unequal length. Let us say we have triangle A, B, C. In scalene triangle, all three sides are of unequal length. Let us say this is of 5 centimeter and this side is of 8 centimeter and this side is of 7 centimeter. So, length of AB is equal to 5 centimeter, length of BC is equal to 8 centimeter and length of CA is equal to 7 centimeter. AB means we know this means line segment AB. So, if we write AB this means we are talking about length of side AB. So, AB in this figure is 5 centimeter. So, we can write AB is equal to 5 centimeter. What is BC? BC length is 8 centimeter. So, I have written BC equal to 8 centimeter. What is the length of CA? It is 7 centimeter. Therefore, I have written CA is equal to 7 centimeter. CM stands for centimeter. So, this is a scalene triangle because all sides have different length. One is 5 centimeter, another is 8 centimeter and third is 7 centimeter. And keep in mind if I write BA that will also be 5 centimeter. If I say CB that will also be 8 centimeter and if I say AC that will also be 7 centimeter. So, it does not matter whether you say AB or you say BA. You can say side BA, side BC or you can also say side AC. Now, in isosceles triangle, in isosceles triangle, any two sides are of equal length. Let us say if this side is 5 centimeter, this also be 5 centimeter and let us say this side is 7 centimeter and this is triangle 
P Q R. So this is isosceles triangle because two sides are of equal length. Length of P Q is five centimeter, or you can say length of Q P is five centimeter. Length of Q R is seven centimeter, or you can also say length of R Q is equal to seven centimeter. Length of R P is equal to five centimeter. Or you can say length of PR is equal to five centimeter. So this is isosceles triangle. Any two sides are of equal length. This is x, y, z. Let's say this is eight centimeter, and this is also eight centimeter, and this is four centimeter. So this is also isosceles triangle. Because two sides are of equal length, this is eight centimeter, this is also eight centimeter, and this is four centimeter. So in isosceles triangle, we have two equal sides. And last is, and last triangle is equilateral triangle. All three sides are of equal length. D E F. Let's say this side is of ten centimeter. This side is also ten centimeter, and this side is also ten centimeter. Then it is equilateral triangle because all three sides are of equal length. D E is equal to ten centimeter. E F is ten centimeter. F D is also ten centimeter. So this is equilateral triangle. Let's say this is x, y, z. Let this side be six centimeter, and this side is also six centimeter, and this side is also six centimeter. So this is equilateral triangle. All sides are of equal length, and length is six centimeter. So we can write x, y is six centimeter, y, z is. Six centimeter. Z axis is six centimeter. Or you can also write y axis is six centimeter. X Z is six centimeter. Z Y is Z Y is six centimeter. So in this video we have seen different types of triangles on the basis of sides thanks for watching